Futebol, futebol é um esporte universal, universal. Game. e como esporte, esporte universal serve a todo mundo e a toda a, mundo e a toda juventude. begins 2,000 years ago. Civilizations have records of football games in their early history. The record from ancient China is the most complete and illuminating. Professor Liu Bingguo is China's leading authority on ancient football, a game called Su Chu. By tradition, Chinese football started 5,000 years ago in the time of the Yellow We know from our research that this was the first place to develop the football game. There is no surviving evidence from the time of the Yellow Emperor, but a very detailed picture survives from later dynasties. Chinese football had three forms. The first was a performing style consisting of difficult tricks. Only one person performed. This style is the oldest. The second type was played with a goal in the middle and a team on either side of the goal. In the third style, there were six goal at each end of the field and two competing teams in the match. Perhaps this style was the most similar to the modern game. These manuscripts are Ming Dynasty, printed in the 15th century. But there is evidence from a much earlier period. During the Han Dynasty, 2,000 years ago, the heart of Chinese civilization was in central China, in what is now Henan province. This is the provincial city of Nanyang. The local museum contains a unique record of the ancient game. These reliefs depicting Han warriors playing football are from the tombs in the surrounding countryside. It's a remote part of China, and this is the first time a foreign television crew has been allowed to film these carvings. In a nearby tomb, there is evidence of these reliefs in situ. Only recently discovered, and still in the process of crude repair, a Han footballer 2,000 years old.
but the true cradle of football lies sheltered in a simple building on a remote hillside 200 miles away. This column, dated 83 BC, depicts the life of Ju Chong, a magistrate of the Han Dynasty who was proud of his footballing skills and records him as the world's first footballer. Tzu Chu is now extinct as a game. But in neighboring Japan, it has a surviving descendant. This is a rare display of kemori being performed at a Shinto shrine in the historical city of Kyoto. The game is only reenacted for ceremonial purposes and is more an exhibition of ball skills than a competitive game. However, it is almost certainly reminiscent of ancient Tzu Chu. There is another game descended from ancient China which flourishes throughout Southeast Asia. Sivak Takra is a highly skillful ball game and a modern competitive sport, not unlike volleyball. It has its own world championships and is an event within the Asian Games. Also a heritage of football games in the New World. This rare print shows the inward game of Aksaktuk, played for hundreds of years across northern Canada. The Arakanian Indians of Chile had a game called Pilimatun. The Telhualque of Patagonia played Choca. But the civilizations of Central America give us a much more detailed picture of the original American football. This is Copan, northern Honduras. Here, among the ruins of a Mayan city of 800 AD, is a ceremonial ball court. The ball game of the Mayas was a central part of their religious beliefs and a very serious affair. The losing team were usually decapitated, their heads used to continue the game. These bloodthirsty rituals perhaps offer a clue to the real origin of football before recorded history. A ritual game to celebrate victory in battle using the heads of vanquished opponents as a ball. By the time the Spanish conquistadores went to the New World, the game, then played by the Aztecs and called Ulamalitzli, was less brutal and used a solid rubber ball. Goals were scored by hitting the ball through small rings at the side of the court. But the players could only use their hips to propel the ball. Hernán Cortés took a team of Aztec ball players back to Spain to perform at the court of Charles V in 1528. In a small corner of northwest Mexico, the local gauchos still play Ulama, a living record of the original American football. to the old world. The ancient Greeks had a form of football called Episkiros. This relief from Piraeus is dated 400 BC. But it's thought that the Greek game was closer to ball juggling than football. The Roman game of Harpastum developed from the Greek game and may have more closely resembled football. This memorial to a Roman soldier from Sinje, Yugoslavia, shows him holding a ball and is dated 200 AD. With the collapse of the Roman Empire, the ancestry of the game becomes obscure. But there are records of various football games being played throughout Europe during the Middle Ages. The most famous of them all is still played today. Florence is the home of Calcio Storico, 
a game which claims to be based directly on the Roman game. It's played with all the pageantry of a medieval tournament. history, closely tied to Florence and the Italian Renaissance. Alessandro de' Medici played the game, as did Niccolò Machiavelli in 1498. Pope Clement VII was proud to have played in his youth. Today, the game has lost none of its splendor or violence. and passion here are typical of medieval football. A strong sense of tradition, intense local rivalry, and blatant physical aggression. But the rudiments of all modern football games are plain to see. organized and certainly less splendid but equally intense in Brittany the French played La Soul, a melee between local villages the game is now extinct but was specially revived for this recent film In Britain, they were called mob games, and there were many examples. They caused so many problems that a succession of English and Scottish kings declared a ban on mob football. Some of them survived, and this one, the annual Shrove Tide match at Ashbourne in Derbyshire, is still played today between the uppers and downers of the village. The goals are three miles apart. The game lasts all day. These games were essentially rural traditions, but as the social makeup of Britain began to change during the 19th century, so the crucial steps were taken in the formation of modern football. The first major development was in the English public schools. At the end of the 18th century, they were unruly, even violent institutions, occupied by the idle sons of the aristocracy. But as the sons of the new middle classes began to enter these elite establishments, the demand for discipline grew. Each public school had its own mob game. But during the early years of the 19th century, rules began to be imposed on these games. Enlightened headmasters like Dr. Arnold at rugby school saw the value of manly games in channeling the aggression of his boys into self-reliance and strength of character. This is the annual Cockhouse match at Harrow School, where football is still played according to the same rules devised in 1830. Harrow preferred the dribbling, kicking style rather than the running, handling style. They were the first school to have 11 players on each team and a goal was scored by kicking the ball between upright posts. 
these rules of Harrow School and the influence of its old boys were to become the cornerstone of modern football. When the young men from Harrow went up to university, they found their fellow undergraduates from the other public schools had different sets of rules. This dilemma led to a very important meeting at Trinity College, Cambridge in 1848. It was held in the rooms of H.C. Malden and was attended by representatives from the major football schools. The purpose, to agree on a common set of rules. We met in my rooms after hall. I cleared the tables and provided pens, ink and paper. Several asked me on coming in whether an exam was on. Every man brought a copy of his school rules or knew them by heart. We finished five minutes before midnight. The new rules were distributed and posted on the playing fields of Parker's Peace and very satisfactorily they worked. The rules from Cambridge spread quickly as the students returned to their homes. Sheffield FC was formed in 1857. Forest, later to become the famous Wanderers, issued its rules in 1861. But there was still disagreement about the finer points of the game, and the most important meetings in the history of football took place in London in 1863. There were five crucial meetings which determined the future of football. The venue was in Great Queen Street, Lincoln's Inn Fields, at the Freemasons Tavern. Representatives from most of the newly formed clubs in the London area attended. Although the Harrow-Cambridge style was gaining ground, there was still considerable disagreement about whether the game should be a handling running game or a dribbling kicking game. Mr. Pember was elected chairman. Gentlemen, our task is plain. Our simple game, beloved by us all from our school days, is beset by confusion over the rules. Yeah. And we must agree upon a common code. Yeah. 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 The minutes of the meetings have survived and are now kept at the headquarters of the English Football Association in London. They show that the process took many weeks and record that the most momentous decision was taken at the fifth meeting on December the 1st. Morley and Alcock, both from Harrow, proposed two crucial changes. The Look, charging, tripping or the kicking forward. the shins We've of an opponent, known as hacking, like be banned, Sheffield. and that running with the ball Look, in the hands should be disallowed. Campbell of Blackheath objected strongly. Hacking is the game we grew up with, that's the reason we're here. Without the hacking, you'll be doing away with all the pluck in the game. I could bring you a group of Frenchmen who could beat you with only one week of practice. <laughs> <laughs> gentlemen, gentlemen, we must have a decision on this difficult issue. Those in favour? And those against? I hereby declare that the motion is carried. Yeah. The disappointed Blackheath members walked out taking with them the handling running tradition that later developed into rugby football. At that moment, association football was born. Now, by gentlemen's agreement, mob games for ruffians had a common code to play by. The association rules spread rapidly, first and most importantly to the north of England. The arrival of the rules in Darwin, Lancashire, was typical of what happened. The local men had had a traditional mob game, notorious for its violence. This description is from 1825. There was gross brutality, for it mattered not when a man met an opponent where or how he hit him, as the sooner a few men were disabled, the better. Some players would wear a shoe on the left foot, an iron clog on the right. The Industrial Revolution had created a new aristocracy in the dark. Nathaniel Walsh, the owner of the Orchard Cotton Mill, had used his new money to send his son John to Harrow School. He'd returned to Darwin with the new football rules. And in the local pub with his middle-class friends and the working-class men from his father's mill, 
they formed Darwin Football Club. The local men now played by association rules. Their old mob game gone forever. Darwin has had few moments of football glory. They now play in a small regional league. Their old ground lost under terraced houses. But they were the first team to employ a professional, a stonemason from Glasgow, Fergus Souter. It was this development that broke the control of the gentleman amateur and brought the game back to the people. The FA Challenge Cup, established in 1871, was initially dominated by gentlemen amateurs. However, by the early 1880s, Blackburn Rovers, situated just four miles from Darwin, were the major force in the game. They won the cup five times between 1884 and 1891, the first three in consecutive years. Fergus Souter, by then a professional with Blackburn, played in those first three teams. Blackburn were the first of the professional teams which would come to dominate the game. By the time the Football League was established in 1888, with 12 founder members from the North and Midlands, the game was firmly established as the people's game throughout Britain. international in the history of football was played at the West of Scotland cricket ground in 1872. The match between England and Scotland ended in a draw. In these early years, Scotland were the more powerful team, winning seven of the first 11 matches with only two victories to England. By the mid-1870s, the game was spreading around the world with astonishing speed as the arrival of British immigrants, sailors and businessmen marked the establishment of the people's game around the world. Ironically, as early as the turn of the century, the insularity of the British football authorities prevented Britain taking the leading role in developing the world game. This initiative was taken by a Frenchman, Robert Guérin, and a Belgian, Louis Moulinhaus, who'd met at the first international between the two countries on May the 1st, 1904. A meeting was held later that month in a small room at the rear of 229 Rue saint bonnet in Paris. Delegates came from France, Belgium, Denmark, the Netherlands, Spain, Sweden, and Switzerland. The Articles of Agreement were signed. The Fédération Internationale de Football Association, FIFA, was born.